All right, everyone. Welcome back to the land of Kem. I am your host and the author. My name is Jeffrey Drum. Thank you all so much for joining me again. All right, everyone, welcome back. This is episode 87. And I've mentioned before in previous episodes how much I absolutely love the microscopic images of metal particles and other compounds that have been shown during the recent series of chemical analysis because it literally gives us a tiny glimpse into our ancient past. So today, I will be presenting some spectacular images and research from my colleagues at the Acida Project on the Calcite Crystal Hotep at Abu Ghraib. If this is the type of content you're interested in regarding the function of the Egyptian pyramids, please subscribe to the Land of Chem here on YouTube. Click that little notification bell. Like, comment, and stay tuned if you want to help support the channel, thelandofchem.com. If you want to follow me on Instagram, my handle is at thelandofchem. Ladies and gentlemen, I think that is it for today's intro. So without further ado, let's get right to it. All right, everyone, here we go with tonight's episode. So this is an image of the exquisite Calcite Crystal Hotep at Abu Ghraib from my special permission access to the site in 2022. And you can see here the three pyramids of Abu Sir in the distance. And this is a very cool digital recreation of the artifact. And there are tool marks here in the corners and inside of this area here from the tube drill that was used to shape these massive pieces of crystal and stone. And some close up images here. So you can see the finish of the surface on the left and a close up of the crystalline material on the right. And samples of this material were analyzed by the ACIDA project and the following data has been reported. The presented material is calcite of varying degrees of crystallinity. Macroscopically, this is calcite. In ancient times, this kind of it was called alabaster and was used to make handcrafts and sculptures. In the middle of the altar, it is finely crystalline with an elongated shape of crystals. And in the upper part, it is coarsely crystalline with a shape of crystals close to isometric. And this is the first of these spectacular microscope images showing the gorgeous crystalline structure of this stone material. So next, sections of the samples from the body of the altar, elongated calcite crystals are clearly visible. And the next image here showing these elongated crystals here. And I was totally blown away when I first saw these, as I could not believe how beautiful the material looked under a microscope. And I think these are just fantastic and a very cool glimpse into the microscopic structure of this exquisite piece of stonework. Next, section of a sample from the upper part of the altar. This is a single crystal of calcite, about one centimeter in diameter. The internal structure is large domain. The photograph shows the boundary of such domains with different optical orientations. And this is that large single piece of calcite crystal here. So now on to the explanation as provided by our technician at the ACIDA project that specializes in geological analysis and also provided these images. Almost certainly, the origin of the material, both inner and the upper part of the altar, is natural. Such structures are very common in nature. They are formed when, first, there is rapid crystallization of a substance under non-equilibrium conditions, high concentrations, a significant temperature gradient, which is replaced by a slow, near-equilibrium crystallization, low concentrations, a small temperature gradient. This is the most typical development of a process in geology, a rapid current at the beginning with a dampening at the end. The formation of the upper coarse grain layer as a result of repeated high temperature processing is excluded. Heating of calcite 
leads to its transformation into lime, calcium oxide, which actively absorbs water, turning back into calcite, but already non-crystalline quote unquote fluff. The only process by which it could be possible to recrystallize fine crystalline calcite into coarse grain calcite is a very long hundreds of years holding under sub-equilibrium conditions in an aqueous medium. And as always, I like to show research showing that the stone can be sourced in the geographical region that we now know as Egypt to prove that they were quarrying this material for use in the masonry of these structures. And here is a paper discussing the calcite alabaster quarries in the 15th and 16th upper Egyptian gnomes. And a second very interesting article here, in situ dating of ancient quarries, the source of flowstone, quote, calcite alabaster artifacts in the southern Levant. That actually shows some of the in situ quarries for calcite located in caves. And there are some really cool images in this paper here, for example, showing the chisel marks where a block of calcite was being removed from the site. All right, everyone, just a quick reminder that if you want to help support the channel, just check out the landofchem.com. I have some fire Land of Chem merch, hoodies, long sleeve shirts, t-shirts, a brand new logo design. The six degree green lion is currently in the works. Digital copies of the book are still available. Reprints and extremely rare signed copies of the limited first edition purple orchid paper print will be released on the website soon. But in the meantime, if you want to show some love, just check out the landofchem.com. And thank you all so much for the support. All right. Now, these exceptional bowls that are located at Abu Ghraib are made from this exact same calcite crystal material. And you can see here on the right evidence of the green copper oxide, which suggests that these bowls were originally sheathed in copper. So now I will put in some amazing on-site footage from my 2022 expedition so you can see these artifacts up close. And I have a whole lot more on Abu Ghraib, including the three-hold in-situ limestone bowls, the one-hold calcite crystal bowls, and the crystal altar or hotep coming up soon. So please subscribe and stay tuned. I'm good? You're good. Yeah, tell them I'm not filming anybody.
All right, everyone, that is it for today's video. This was episode 87, the Calcite Crystal Hotep at Abu Ghraib. I really hope you enjoyed today's video. And in the next episode in the series, I will be discussing the properties and function of black basalt in regard to the operation of the Egyptian pyramids. If this is the type of content you're interested in, please subscribe to the Land of Chem here on YouTube. Click that little notification bell, like, comment, and stay tuned if you want to help support the channel thelandofchem.com. If you want to follow me on Instagram, my handle is at thelandofchem. Ladies and gentlemen, I think that is it for today's episode. So I will see you the next time. Yo, are you still watching this? Please subscribe to The Land of Chem here on YouTube and click that little notification button. New videos coming out every single week. And check out this other episode. Come on, do it. Do it now. <laughs>